What is up guys and welcome back to a brand new video today and in today's video I'm going to be sharing five things you could do to your Pmax campaigns to improve results. These are five things I've personally tested over the last six to eight weeks since launching Pmax and they have worked really well for me. Just before we do get started, please drop a like down below. It really does help me out. And I'll also leave links down below to my Twitter and Instagram. Feel free to drop me a message on there. I'm happy to help you guys out. So without further ado, we're jumping into the first thing you guys can try here. And that is splitting your products into groups based on their category. Now, a lot of you might have just one performance max campaign with all of your products in and all of your products are also gonna be in that same asset group. Now, there's nothing wrong with that, but in terms of scaling and growing further and optimizing your campaigns, you definitely wanna be categorizing your products, splitting them into different collections and then splitting those collections into their own asset groups. Now, I always use this example, a gym website. A good way to explain this is if you have a gym website, you can start by categorizing your product into t-shirts, you can have vests, you can have shorts, socks, you know, headwear, whatever that may be, you'd split those products into those different groups and then you'd make those groups their own asset groups. Now, the reason you wanna do this is because when it comes to making your asset groups, you can make very specific headlines, descriptions and offers and the images you're using as well cater towards that specific collection. Now, whereas if you have a broad asset group with all of your products in, you're gonna to have to be so generic with your titles, descriptions, and images, you may struggle to capture people's attention because it is not gonna be the most relevant content to the viewer. So doing it this way is a great way to increase things like click-through rate. Now, I'm just on an asset group here. I'll obviously blur out my info, but this is what I mean. When you're writing your headlines, your long headlines, your descriptions, being able to be more specific and direct to the specific categories of the products you're promoting, it is only gonna be beneficial for you. So this is a great thing to do because I'm covering four other points in this video, I'm not gonna go into too much detail, but if you wanna see a specific video on me creating an asset group, for example, with a product category in mind, let me know, I'll be gladly able to do that. Now, next up here, guys, is a way you can test another audience signal, and that is gonna be adding website data to your Google Ads account. Similar to with Facebook, where you create custom audiences, this is exactly what you'll be doing in Google. You can use a variety of things. You can make audiences with past buyers from your website, people who have visited specific web pages, etc. Now, I'm gonna quickly hop over to my Google Ad account and show you how to do this. Now, first thing you wanna do is hit the Tools and uh, Settings button on your Google account at the top. I'm pretty sure that's off the screen, but you'll know where that is. Then click Audience Manager. It'll bring you to a page that looks like this. Now, I'm gonna blur out the names of my audiences because uh, obviously it will give away what I sell. Now a lot of ad accounts on Google already have some made for you and, and that'll include things like all website visitors. I've got here shopping cart abandoners. I will leave these ones names visible because obviously I don't need to blur those out but you'll get the idea and you'll see some already here. Now these are all great audiences you can use. You're probably wondering why I've got so many. That's because I've created so many other custom audiences and what you want to do is click this plus button here. It gives you these options. Now very quickly a customer list. This is where you upload your own customer data. A good thing to do would be going on to Shopify, exporting your customer list, adding it to Google, and then using an audience that way. This is good if you wanna upload and make an audience based on um, lifetime spend, repeat buyers, you could do people who have brought specific products. This is a good way of exporting those groups of customers off Shopify, putting them onto Google as well. Now, if you wanna make an audience based on people who visited a certain URL, you click website visitors here. We're just gonna name this one Jim Socks as an example. And then you usually leave these ones the same. So you want to leave this as um, people who have visited a page, match any rule group, and that page URL has to contain. And then in our case, it will be gym socks. Now to get this URL bit here, you just go on your product page on your website, and it is the last bit of the URL that you'd want to put in there. This is good for best sellers as well. If you want to make an audience of people who have visited the product page of your best seller, you would put the best sellers sort of product URL handle in there, and that'd make an audience of people who have visited that URL. You can backdate these audiences 30 days. So if I made this audience now, it would take the last 30 days worth of data of people who visited this page. Very handy, but it saves you starting from scratch from today. Day, you'll have 30 days of data all ready to use straight away. And this here is the membership duration, essentially how long people stay in this audience for. If you have it as 30 days, if someone visited that product page 32 days ago, they'd no longer be in this audience. I usually test 90 to 180 days. But if you have more data and more visitors, it can sometimes be worth just making this a lower number like 30 or 60 days. Nonetheless, you'd make this custom audience and then use that custom audience as an audience signal in your Pmax campaigns. 
Now I'm sure you know, but I will explain, Google don't just use that audience as people to target in the Pmax campaigns. It is essentially a starting point, a reference point for Google to then go out and find other people who they think are similar to that audience, kind of like a Facebook lookalike actually. If you have a strong starting point with your audience signal, that is only gonna increase the chances of Google finding the right customers for you. Now next up here is one that I personally use the most out of all of the options in this video, and that is referring to the Insights tab within your Pmax campaigns. This is essentially a tab of data in your Performance Max campaigns that gives you a variety of information that essentially is telling you what is working right now for that campaign. It will give you things like best groups of keywords that are bringing you the most sales. It will give you best in-market audiences and it will tell you how much more likely people in those audiences are to convert. I have got a couple of screenshots in a minute just to show you examples of those. And the gist of this is you want to be testing what is being shown in your insights tab as your audience signals. You could probably tell already that a big thing with Pmax campaigns is just testing different audience signals. Now you can see here as an example of my insights tab on one of my UK Performance Max campaigns, I've obviously blurred out here the um, ads that were shown as well as the recommended uh, in-market audiences because that does give away the products I sell. But essentially here it will have different rows of different in-market audiences. These are groups of people that are in the market for, for certain products or services. And these numbers here tell you how much more likely those customers are to purchase from your store compared to someone not in those audience signals. So you would want to take each of these in-market audience segments and put them into their own individual asset groups. If you watch my other videos, you'll know that I'm not a fan of stacking multiple in-market segments into one audience signal because at the end of the day, you're not going to know which one's doing best, which one's doing bad. Splitting them up separately into their own asset groups allows you to properly see which audience signals are doing best for you. Now throughout the insights tab, there are other things as well. Like I said, there are keyword groups as well. You'll have a box that looks something like this. And for me, it will tell you, for example, this first group here, I've obviously blurred it out because it shows the keywords. This group of keywords here has generated me £1,260. And I believe this is in a last seven day period or a week by week period, I think, rather than month by month. And then if you were to click the asset groups, it would tell you what uh, asset groups have been using these keywords. And to get the groups of keywords, all you'd simply do is click the arrow here. It would expand up and open a box and then you would just copy and paste. I usually copy and paste the first 15 keywords in the group. It will give you literally hundreds. Just copy the first 15 or so. And then when you're making a new asset group and a new audience signal with a custom segment, just paste those keywords into the custom segment, hit save, and that will be your audience signal for that campaign. Remember, don't put any other things like demographics in there, in market segments. If you're using a keyword group, make that the only thing in that audience signal. Because again, you want to be split testing these. You don't want to be stacking them together. You want to be completely separating all these in your audience signals within your asset groups so you know which ones are doing good and which ones are doing bad. Now next up here, number four, is going to be testing a new bid strategy. Now the two options with Pmax are maximize conversions or maximize conversion value. Now I've just brought one of my campaigns up here. You can see I'm using maximize conversion value with a target ROAS of 270%. Now my break-even ROAS on most of my products is very low, which is obviously a good thing. So that allows me to have a lower target ROAS, which essentially allows me to spend more each day as well. With regards to maximize conversion value or maximize conversions, personally for me, maximizing conversion value has been the better option. I know with other people, maximize conversions is the best option. I definitely have tested both over the last six to eight weeks and this has been the clear winner for me. But I do recommend testing both across some campaigns. And with regards to having a target ROAS on or a target CPA on, again, this works for some campaigns. I have some really good Pmax campaigns with no target ROAS, so it would look like this. But some do really well with a target ROAS set. So it's definitely something to pay attention to. Definitely test both. I find campaigns with less products in do really well without a target ROAS. But if you've got a campaign with more products in, for example, like my bucket campaign, having a target ROAS just allows you to control that spend a bit and sort of guarantee a result. And with so many products in the campaign, it definitely helps as well. So this is something you should definitely be testing. And that is the bid strategy here, as well as testing with or without target rise. Or if you're using the other bid strategy, test with or without a target CPA, which is essentially a target cost for purchase. And finally, guys, it is going to be a single product Pmax campaign. Now, I have been using Google Ads for about three years on my UK site and about 18 months on my US site. So obviously, by now, I know what products are my best sellers on Google. Previously, these were in smart shopping campaigns, but the same applies to Pmax. I essentially took these out of the bucket campaigns. I put them into their own smart shopping campaigns and then when I migrated over to Pmax, they stayed as single products as a Pmax campaign. 
And the reasoning behind this is essentially similar to the first point. You are gonna be able to provide Google with assets that are product specific. You'll be able to provide them with titles, descriptions, long descriptions, videos if you have them specific to that product. And having very product specific targeted ads is gonna be very good for your click through rate. And when these sorts of best selling products are in campaigns with loads of other products, you're not gonna be able to use, you won't be taking advantage of the best audience signals because you just won't know what ones are gonna be working for your best sellers. It will allow you to scale efficiently and which will essentially reward you with a better ROAS moving forward with your best sellers. Now on the screen here is a last 30 days graph of one of my single products Pmax campaigns. Now you can see I've achieved a 5.24% conversion rate, which is very, very nice at a 14 pound 20 cost for purchase spent five thousand pounds and if we just see the conversion value from that it has generated a total of twelve thousand nine hundred pounds now like i said the break-even rise on these products are very good and on this i'll probably be looking about a 25 30 percent profit margin and then add this to the several other single product campaigns i've got it has allowed me to scale much more quicker with pmax than, than i ever did with smart shopping campaigns so if you have already got an idea of what your best selling products are with google i would definitely start by putting them in their own single product campaigns because you will only end up doing it a few months down the line it's best to do it now get that data going and get optimizing quickly so you can scale and especially this time of year we're coming into q4 soon now is the best time to segment these products out into their own campaigns and scale so guys i hope you found this video useful and you can take some tips on board to test in your performance max campaigns if you've got any questions drop comments down below smash the like button and like i said at the start message me on twitter or instagram if you need any help with your Google Ads, I'm happy to take a look. Other than that, I'll see you in my next video.